So this is going to be my final video on hemodynamics. In this one, I'm going to be talking about vascular pressure and compliance, two uh, kind of related concepts. Um, I'm going to give you two equations today uh, in this video, but uh, the more important thing from this video, I think, is actually to really hammer down the concepts. So let's go ahead and start over here. This is uh, my rough diagram of uh, the circulatory system. We've got the systemic circulatory system. We've got our heart our arteries, smaller arteries, arterioles, capillaries, spaniels, veins, uh, vena cava back to the heart. Okay, starting in our arteries, um, we have high pressure in our arteries, okay? The mean pressure is about 100 millimeters of mercury. Um, that, the pressure in our arteries is actually pulsatile. Uh, that's why you can feel your pulse, okay? Um, it goes up and down, with the pulsations of blood coming out of the heart. Um, and the reason for that actually comes back to compliance. We'll talk about that in a minute. Um, in, and then when we get here, uh, these are actually arterioles right here, this huge drop off. Our arterioles um, have high resistance, which means that they actually can cause the pressure to decrease dramatically. And that's pretty important because um, we don't want incredibly high pressures to be in our venous structures, okay? Um, our venous structures don't have a pulse also because of this concept of compliance that we'll talk about in a minute. Um, now, why is this so important? The pressure differential is actually the driving force of um, blood flow. If there were no pressure differential, blood would not flow. It's as simple as that. Um, the body needs this, and the heart creates this pressure differential by pumping the blood, right, and creating this high, high pressure blood in the arteries. Um, one other note about arterioles, this is where our blood pressure drops off. This is also where blood pressure can be most regulated. Um, the diameter of our arterioles can be constricted or dilated. It has alpha and beta adrenergic receptors that perform that function. Um, and that allows the body to very tightly control blood pressure. Okay, that happens right there in the arterioles. Very, very important aspect of that. Okay, um, let's dump, jump in and talk a little bit about... Um, Compliance, okay? So compliance is the ability of a blood vessel to stretch, okay? To deform is, is actually what it is. Um, venous structures are much more easily stretched than arterial structures. And the reason for that is simply because they don't have muscle around them like our arteries do. Arteries are a little bit more rigid, okay? So what, why does that uh, matter, okay? Actually, because arteries are more rigid, the blood will flow through, okay, in that pulsatile fashion. Because it's not able to deform it a lot. If it were, blood would pool there, um, and it, it wouldn't continue to flow through quickly. So that kind of keeps it safe, and it pulses through. We get this pulsatile uh, movement of blood. Now in our, in our venous structures, um, where they are more, the venous structures are actually more compliant, they're more able to be deformed, when you add pressure, they actually deform a little bit, so the blood starts to pool, okay? And, and, and that's important, right? Because if we didn't have that function, um, then everything would be pulsing every time you moved, right? Because um, every time your heart beat, because your venous structures would be pulsing, your arterial structures are pulsing, but you add the venous structures pulsing on top of that, you, you, you start bouncing up and down. We don't want that to happen. Um, so that doesn't happen. Um, this equation, compliance is equal to the ability of the... Um, of the vasculature to deform, the amount its volume can expand, divided by the amount of pressure change. So essentially what this is saying 
in a relatively non-compliant, something that has a compliance of zero, no matter how much the pressure changes, the volume will not change, okay? In something that's compliant, the volume will change as the pressure changes. All right, there, that's that for compliance. Um, last of all, uh, let's talk about this right here, okay? So this is actually uh, a little bit of a pressure curve, okay? Um, we have this little nick in the pressure curve, which is, um, that's actually representative of when the aortic valve closes, okay? And, and the closing of the valve creates this little nick in the pressure. Um, and then it goes back up before coming back down to diastole. So diastole, systole, diastole. This first one is normal. You know, starting at about 80, going to 120, and coming back down to 80. And these other two are, path are pathologies. Uh, and I just wanted to, t to think about what would make these happen, okay? So uh, this one, the systole is higher than... Um, the, than normal, okay? And the reason for that is actually because this vessel has become less compliant. Its ability to stretch has decreased, okay? So the it's created a greater pressure there. And this is arterial sclerosis. Arterial sclerosis is going to decrease the compliance of the vessel causing the systole to be higher. Now this one, on the other hand, is actually aortic stenosis. This does not have anything to do with the compliance of the blood vessels. The blood vessels haven't changed in compliance, but by creating that stenotic valve, okay, that hardened valve, less, uh, you're, you're not able to have, eject as much blood Okay, so your flow rate is going to be less, which causes a smaller pressure differential, okay? So it's going to have a lower systolic pressure. I hope these videos were, were helpful to you today. Um, go ahead and leave some comments for me. Uh, like and subscribe this channel. Um, and I hope you guys have a great day. Thank you. Bye.